I think something went wrong when I was born. My parents tell me it was fine, other than being close to Christmas. They didn't want a child born near Christmas because they were afraid it would be overshadowed by the holiday. They let me do whatever I wanted for my birthday, and if that meant that I wanted a slumber party with 20 of my friends, so be it. I learned from an early age that the night before my birthday was special, however. It was a time for me and me alone. I couldn't let anyone else know about the 12 minutes after midnight, those 12 minutes leading up to the moment of my birth. 12 minutes in which I didn't exist. The day of my birth, but not yet the moment. A strange void in which I was and was not. I can't explain where I got that idea. It's something that's always been in my head from the moment I could form memories. I think I tried talking about it with my classmates once, along with everything else that happens in those 12 minutes. And I quickly learned that I was a strange one and I shouldn't tell this story because I would be laughed at. It started small, but profoundly terrifying for a small child. My earliest memory is of a dark, claustrophobic space with the weight of the blankets I was hiding under, the heat of my own body and the stale air that I desperately tried not to breathe, too afraid they would hear me, even though I knew it was too late, for I held the edge of my blanket down with both hands, even as they gently pried at it, trying to lift it up and reveal me cowering underneath. It felt like it went on all night. Now that I am older, I know it only lasted 12 minutes. As I got older, hiding under the blanket was not enough. I was in third grade the first time they pulled me out from under there. They lifted it up just enough to reach a hand through, and even in the darkness, I could see that it was human, but too angular. The smell of joints and the curve of skin was entirely absent. It was like a cut out of a hand, there was no colour, either, and no depth. It did not reflect the light, scant as it was. It grabbed my wrist, and it was so cold that I cried out, but weakly, because terror was wrapped around my throat, and I was choking on it. I could barely move. It pulled and drew me out as I stumbled and I fell onto the floor, and I saw all around me the darkness that covered the walls of my bedroom and was stretched across the floor. I was alone on a narrow strip of carpet, with my bed behind me, and it was like everything ended at that edge, vanishing into an empty gulf. The hands came from that darkness, dozens of them, stretching out along the floor to grab at my wrists and ankles. I dug in my heels, grabbed hold of my bed frame, and the hands could move me no further. They tried, but they were weak, and I remained where I was until my clock's hands reached twelve and I was alone in my bedroom. I screamed for my parents. Sobbing, I told them what happened, and my father investigated the house and told me all the windows and doors were locked. Nothing had gotten in, and it was probably a nightmare. And like with my classmates, I learned to not talk about it. I guess as a kid, I interpreted that their evasiveness about the circumstances of my birth meant they knew about those 12 minutes and wouldn't do anything about it. In eighth grade... I learned to fight back. Holding my ground wasn't enough. I was getting bigger, but they were getting stronger. By then, I'd learned that hiding wasn't enough, so I'd sit on the edge of my bed, watching the clock tick towards midnight. Happy birthday, I whispered to myself as December 20th began, and the darkness started to crawl in across the walls, starting at the corner of my vision. The 12 minutes in which I didn't exist, and the void came to claim me. They surrounded me and I stood to confront them. I felt cold fingers close on my legs, on my arms, and I braced myself as they began to tug and drag me towards the void. And my front foot gave a step. Another. I stumbled and panic welled up in my chest. I was losing. They were dragging me forwards, inch by inch, and I wondered what would happen when I reached the edge of the floor. Would I fall? Would I die? Would I cease to exist? My breath felt like fire in my lungs, and my chest heaved in tiny hysterical gasps. And in my panic, I slapped one of the hands. Then I closed my fingers into a fist, and I hit it at the wrist, and it shattered. Just like that. Shattered, like glass, 
and fell into splinters on the floor. So I fought them off for ten long minutes, and when they vanished, I went to my bed and sat there, shaking, for hours. I didn't take it very well, realising I had to fight for my life now. I got shingles soon after. The reactivation of chickenpox that the doctor said was due to stress, and my first ever D on my report card. My parents assumed it was because we'd just moved to another state, and grounded me until my grades improved. I resented them for that, and decided I wouldn't tell them anything ever again. In my sophomore year of high school, those splinters cut my skin when I shattered the Huns. The next year, I wrapped my Huns with medical tape in the minutes leading up to midnight. In my freshman year of college, I bought a baseball bat and smuggled it into my old bedroom. Classes were out, and part of me was relieved because my roommate wouldn't be involved, but part of me was also sad, because I wanted to know if anyone else could see the darkness too. I still don't know. I've never married, and I've never had anyone around at midnight on my birthday. I keep people at a distance. I think I'm cursed. You see, my parents kept telling me that my birth was normal, and I finally stopped asking. Don't get me wrong. Despite what I said earlier, I have a healthy relationship with my parents. I grew out of the teenage angst, and I haven't told them what happens every night on my birthday, because I don't think they can help me, and I think it would destroy them to know I've spent all these years fighting for my life all on my own. But they have their secret as well. My birth was not normal. Something went wrong. I'd long suspected this a couple of years ago. After a particularly vicious fight with the intruders, they pulled my feet out from under me, and I was on the very edge of the floor. I could feel the cold of the void on my back, and then it was twelve minutes and I was safe. I decided that I was going to figure out exactly what happened. I'd start with the only documentation easily available to me, my birth certificate. I went to my parents' house one day while they were out of town on a trip. They keep all their important documents in a lockbox, and I got this out and opened it up. Inside were their passports, their birth certificates, copies of our social security cards. Underneath that were personal things, letters and photos and their irreplaceable mementos. I made sure to set everything aside in order, but I quickly lost track, as I had to dig through far more than I thought I would. My birth certificate was at the very bottom, the second to last document in the box. I wondered why they'd buried it there, when all the other identifying documents were within easy reach. I took it out, unfolded it, and read my birthplace. The time of birth, twelve minutes past midnight. Then I folded it and started to put it back in the box. My glance fell on the document underneath. Only one thing left inside. A yellowed envelope. On a whim, I picked it up. I'd already snooped through everything else. What was one more envelope, right? Inside was a death certificate. Same town, same date. My name. 12am. Was I stillborn? Was my soul fighting for the right to existence in those 12 minutes? just as I fight every year since. I don't know. I have my answer, I guess, but I still don't know what to do with it. I have to keep thinking of how to stay ahead of the void. That comes to claim me. Fighting them off is getting harder. There's too many of those Huns and I can't shatter them all, so I started prioritizing. I keep my center of gravity low to maintain my balance and aim for the ones that are trying to grab my arms first so that I can keep swinging my weapon. Then I tried to knock off the ones grabbing my legs next. Two years ago, one grabbed my throat. I dropped the bat on instinct, stupid, I know, and tried to pry its fingers off of my neck. I couldn't breathe. It was crushing me. I couldn't break its grip, and I remember slipping into darkness right as a clock ticked over to eleven minutes after midnight. When I woke up, it was thirty minutes after midnight, and I'd been moved a full two feet from where I last remembered. I wonder how close they'd gotten my unconscious body to the void. Last year, I fought like a wild beast. My careful stance and preparations were forgotten. I couldn't simply hold my ground, not with the memory of that thing choking the breath out of me, burned into my memories. I felt their fingers grazing my skin, and it was like I was being burned as I thrashed wildly, desperate to shake them off. The pain was too much, and I put my head down and I ran instead, because the darkness had not yet consumed the room and the door was still there, and the hallway beyond it, and I thought, this was it. This 
was the solution. I would flee instead of fight. They followed. I made it to the car in the driveway and backed out into the street and floored the gas. The darkness came with me. It seeped in around the edge of the windshield, covering it like frost and then peeling off into fingers and reaching for my face. I spun the wheel in a panic, sliding the car into a streetlight. Sliding the car into a streetlight. Then I ripped the door open and fell out onto the street, just as their hands closed on my shirt and they began to drag me backwards and the colour was draining out of the world. Everything was fading into grey. And then it was twelve minutes after midnight. I lay on my stomach in the street. My car was badly dented, but no significant damage from the impact. I drove it back home and stood in the shower, watching the blood run from the cuts on my back, where their fingers had pierced my skin, run down the drain. I think I understand what is happening. A friend's kid once made a smart remark to us. After she said she was eleven and a half, and someone told her that her half year didn't count towards her age. She said that grown-ups don't count half years because we're closer to dying, which is dark and hilarious, but also true. I am closer to dying. Every year, I'm closer to death. And every year, my visitors have gotten stronger. I guess we're all trying to starve off death in our own way. My fight is just a little more literal I was dead in those twelve minutes after midnight, and something brought me back. Perhaps I fought my way out, but I think I was meant to stay dead, and perhaps this is just the grace window of opportunity, once a year, trying to drag me back to where I belong. It's getting so hard. Twelve minutes is a very long time when you're fighting for your life. I took up running this year. I've been working for speed more than endurance. I only need to keep going for twelve minutes, after all. Hiding stopped working, and now fighting is not enough, so I'm going to try flight. I'm going to run like death itself is on my heels, and it is. And maybe I can keep running every year after this, until my body begins to fail with age, and oblivion doesn't seem so unjust anymore. I've got my running clothes on already, my running shoes. I'm terrified, and there's still hours to go. Wish me luck. And if you don't hear from me tomorrow, then I guess I wasn't fast enough.